Welcome to some bird fun. My name is Sarah Howard and I'm the Youth and Community Services Manager for the DBRL Library. And we're happy to have Paige Wittick here. She's the Education Coordinator for the Missouri River Bird Observatory and that's located in Arrow Rock. So we're excited to have her here as part of our summer reading tales and tales programming. And it's not too late to sign up for summer reading regardless of your age. Um, and feel free to put some questions in the chat and Paige can address those at the end of the program. Okay. And I'm going to magically disappear so that she can share with us all about backyard bird sounds. Thanks for being here, Paige. Thanks for inviting me, Sarah. All right, let's get started. So I have a presentation for you all so that I can share some sounds as well as sights of birds. So let me just make sure that it's all working. All right, so we're gonna talk about backyard bird songs today. So let's get started. First, I'm just gonna tell you a little bit about myself. I have a picture there of what I typically look like when I'm doing in-person programs. I'm very animated. So just kind of imagine that. If I move around that much via Zoom, I'll tend to freeze up. So I'm gonna to try to stay as still as possible. But you know, you can, I'll try to do the same thing, but with my voice instead of my body. Um, but I grew up uh, in Green Bay, Wisconsin, and I went to school at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Uh, and I, during college um, is really where I developed my love for birds and my love for education um, and sharing my love for birds with other people. And I had worked at various wildlife organizations and sanctuaries that kind of just developed that um, you could say obsession with birds, um, which you'll kind of get a hint at as I give this presentation. Um, but I moved to Missouri in 2017 um, and have been here ever since. So I've been here for about four years now. Um, and I'm like Sarah said, I'm the education coordinator for the Missouri River Bird Observatory. So let me talk a little bit about what that is next. Um, but lastly, um, a big thing about myself is that I think birds are awesome. So the Missouri River Bird Observatory, our mission is to conserve birds and other wildlife and their habitats through research and monitoring, education and outreach and advocacy. And if you want to learn more about the Missouri River Bird Observatory, we'll put a link to our website in the chat later um, during the presentation. But let's get started about bird sounds. So thinking about how do birds communicate? Well, they communicate a lot like humans do. They communicate both verbally and non-verbally. So in general, verbal communication refers to our use of words, while nonverbal communication refers to communication that occurs through means other than words, such as body language, gestures, like I do normally in in-person programs. Um, even silence can be a form of nonverbal communication. But today we're going to focus on verbal communication, specifically bird vocalizations, or in other words, bird language. Now I want you to remember from here on out that not all birds vocalize. Uh, most birds make some sort of sound to communicate, but not all birds do. Um, so the rest of what I'm about to share with you is mainly about small songbirds, but there are many more examples of bird vocalizations. And in nature, there are always exceptions to the rules um, that we, <laughs> we put on nature and that I'm about to share with you. So these are good generalizations as you're learning things, um, but know that there are exceptions to a lot of these rules. So first, I want to talk about, uh, I want you, I'm going to play two recordings, uh, two vocalizations made by northern cardinals, which are the birds that you see here. The male is the bright red one and the female is that little browner colored one, but still got cool red streaks. Um, and I'm going to play these two different vocalizations uh, made by these northern cardinals for different purposes. And as I play them, I want you to think about how you would describe the vocalizations and what are the similarities and differences between them. What are the ways that the bird sounds are similar or different from one another? So here's the first recording. So what did that, you know, how would you describe that sound? 
And how is it similar or different to this recording? And please let me know if those recordings didn't come through for whatever reason, but you may have to turn the volume up because we'll be sharing a lot of those. Um, so what I'm going to share with you, um, so those two different vocalizations are by Northern Cardinals, like I said, and they're made for different purposes. And when we're talking about bird vocalizations, um, we have two main types. Um, we have songs, Oh, sorry. We have songs and the, and we have calls. And the first vocalization that I played for you is the Northern Cardinals song. And the second vocalization was their call. So again, this is what the Northern Cardinals song sounds like. Oh, I'm not sure. I guess it's not going to play for us. Um, but that song was that dirty, birdie, birdie, birdie. And that call note was that short chip, so now let's talk about those differences between the songs and the calls. Oh. Okay, hold on. We're going to try this one more time. <laughs> so, Northern Cardinal. Oh, shoot. I'm so sorry, everybody. We're going to hear a lot of the Cardinal today because um, of these recordings. So let's talk about what characteristic songs have. So that first birdie, birdie, birdie that you heard as I was playing those songs again. So they tend to be more complex. So what I mean by that is there's more rising and falling in notes. Um, they're kind of, they, uh, they differ in pitch um, between the different birds. They also tend to be more pleasant, I guess is one way to describe it. So um, they're kind of sweeter sounding to our ears. Um, versus calls, which are not as much so. Uh, they're learned, so the birds don't know them instinctually. They learn them, uh, most birds learn them um, from their adults that are in their area. So in that way, we can get some regional dialects and stuff between different songs. And they're typically given by males during the breeding season, which is typically during the summertime. So, um, and there are exceptions to those rules. There are some females that will also sing, um, but in general, it's going to be the males uh, during the breeding season. They are used to establish a territory and or attract a mate. And I apologize, our phone is ringing in the office here, um, but I'm just going to keep trying to talk over it. Um, so they're going to sing either to say, hey, this is my space with my resources. Everybody else stay out. This is my territory or they might use it to say, hey, females, here I am, choose me as your partner. Um, so those are some reasons that birds sing. Um, calls are a little bit different and they're a lot more broad. So they tend to be simple and short, like that second recording of the Northern Cardinal, chip, 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 chip. <laughs> they are loud and abrasive. Um, and that'll come a little bit when we talk about why birds make calls. Um, but they're like, I guess you could say less pleasant to listen to, um, but still really cool to hear because they can tell you a lot about what's going on. And they're innate. So that means the birds know them. It's instinctually, they don't have to learn them. And they're given by all sexes at all times of the year. So any time of the year, you can hear birds calling to each other. And they are used for multiple purposes. So birds call to raise an alarm. That's one of the most common reasons birds call. They use them to maintain contact between flock members. So that's typically what you're hearing when you hear geese honking overhead. They're saying, hey, I'm over here. Hey, I'm over here. Um, let's not like bump into each other kind of. And they're also used to beg for food. So these are those young birds in the nest that might say, hey, I'm hungry, um, which I'm sure is something you may have heard from kids around you saying, hey, I'm hungry. Birds do the same thing when they're in their nest to let their parents know that they need food. So they're used for a lot of different purposes. And any other reason you might think that birds want, want to communicate with each other, that's likely going to be a different call that that bird has. So now what I want to do is share with you some of Missouri's common backyard bird sounds. So these are all sounds that I'm hearing um, right now, kind of in the morning and in the afternoon 
um, of these different birds um, that are found in most people's backyards or in a local park where you might live um, or just in your neighborhood. And when I play the recordings, they're gonna have both the song and call on them. And I want you to think about which one might be which. Which one is gonna be longer, more complex, more sweet sounding um, that might be used to establish a territory or attract a mate. Which one is gonna be simple, short, more loud, um, more abrasive. Um, that might be the call note. So first, let's talk about the black cap chickadee. Um, this is one, a very common backyard bird, a very cute common backyard bird. Um, and this is what they sound like. So there were two different kind of sounds there and one was the song and one was the call. So that first thing, that first part of the recording that you heard, um, that do, 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 do. I remember that, that is their song. And I remember it by picturing that they're saying cheeseburger, cheeseburger. Cause I think that's funny that these chickadees are going around saying cheeseburger. Another, um, what we call mnemonic device to help um, remember this bird call um, is, hey, sweetie, hey, sweetie. Um, and that can help people remember that as well. Um, and then that second part was the, the call note and they use that as an alarm call and it, what, it's how they got their name. So the chickadee dee dee dee, chickadee dee. Um, and what scientists have figured out through research is that the amount of Ds and how fast they say the Ds corresponds to the amount of danger that the chickadee is in. So for example, if you or I were walking through a forest um, along a trail, a chickadee might be like, chickadee dee, like, hey everybody, just be aware that there's some humans over there. Um, not a whole lot of danger, but just FYI, everybody. Versus like if a Cooper's hawk or a Sharpshin hawk were to come into the forest, that would be a much bigger threat to the chickadee. So they would be like chickadee dee 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 dee, chickadee dee 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 dee, a much more rapid, much more um, like intense sounding um, with a lot more D notes, which I think is really, really cool. So turning to being able to tune into this chickadee's alarm call can maybe let you know about some other creatures that might be hanging around in the forest, which I think is pretty cool. So here's that recording one more time. So listen for that cheeseburger and the chickadee dee 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 at the end. So that is the black cap chickadee. And maybe you've heard that outside in your backyard before and now you know what it is. Next is the blue jay. Um, and I would suspect that many of you have probably heard a blue jay in your backyard or neighborhood or uh, around in your daily lives before, but maybe not have known that's what it was. So this is what blue jay sound like. So lots of different sounds there. Um, and blue jays are also unique in that they can mimic other birds. And I'll talk about that in a second. But in that recording, you heard mostly the blue jays calling. So um, some people say it kind of sounds like J, 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 J. Um, I don't think it really sounds like that, but that's a good way to kind of like remember the pattern 
um, and then associate that again with blue jays. Um, but I think it kind of sounds more like eh, 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 like kind of angry sounding. Um, and then at the very end there, you kind of got a little bit of their song, which is kind of like a car alarm is how I would describe it. So that do -do -do -do, do -do -do -do, do -do 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 kind of sound. Um, but like I said, blue jays can also mimic other birds. So um, uh, one that I hear them mimic most often is the red-shouldered hawk. And there could be a variety of reasons why a blue jay might mimic a red-shouldered hawk. Um, one thing that I observed is a blue jay flies up near my feeders. It mimics the red-shouldered hawk call which is kind of like a very high pitched, like kiu, kiu, kiu. Um, I can't really do it, um, but they mimic the red-shouldered hawk call. All the other birds fly away from the feeder, thinking that a red-shouldered hawk might near be, be nearby. And then the blue jay has the feeder all to itself. So they're quite smart birds. So I suspect that they have a purpose when they sing um, or mimic that red-shouldered hawk call. So see if you can maybe spot that in your own backyard too. But here is that recording one more time for you to listen for that car alarm sound and that JJJ sound. So lots of different sounds they can make, but I, I'm sure you heard that kind of car alarm sounding um, song in there too. So that's the blue jay. Uh, next is the tufted titmouse. So if you haven't heard of this bird before, um, I can almost guarantee that it's been around you before. They're one of the most common birds that very few people know about, but they're really cute and they're really cool birds. They have a lot of personality, I think. Um, and they make a lot of different sounds as well, um, but they do kind of have a very um, common song that you hear a, a, decent, a decent pattern to it. Um, and they have a variety of calls um, that they do as well. So here's what they sound like. So, so in there, um, I think it's easier to distinguish between that song and call because they definitely have a different tone between the two. Um, but their song is that thing you heard at the beginning. So it kind of sounds like they're going Peter, 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 Peter. So if you can remember that the tufted titmouse is always looking for Peter, that'll help you know, remember their song. Um, their call was that kind of nasal yank with these high pitched sounds kind of help happening simultaneously. Um, and that's their alarm call. Um, and that high pitch sound makes it, um, allows them to kind of send a signal out to the other birds, but that high pitch is hard to locate. So it doesn't necessarily give away their location to predators, which I think is pretty cool. So one more time, here's the tufted titmouse. That's the tufted titmouse. 
Next, we have the American goldfinch. So this is a very common one at feeders as well because they, the American goldfinch mainly eat seeds. Um, and pictured here, they have a little bit different plumage depending if they're male or female and the time of year. Um, so the one on the left there, that bright yellow one, that is the male's breeding plumage. So that's what they look like during the summertime. And the one on the right there is actually a juvenile. So what you're seeing is a parent feeding a juvenile. Um, but the females also look very similar to that juvenile. So they're a little bit more brown in color. The females might be a little bit more yellow than that juvenile. Um, and then in the winter, the males change their uh, feather color, their plumage, um, and they, be, they look more like the females. So they only have that bright yellow um, plumage during the summertime. Some people are like, where'd all those little yellow birds go? And I'm like, they're still around. They just changed colors on you. So this is what they sound like. Lots of different noises in there, right? So that last part of the recording with all those different jumbles, we call that a warble. So American goldfinches kind of have this long variable warble. Um, and a lot of finches have that as their song, kind of more complicated, kind of all over the place. Um, their call um, is what you heard at the beginning. Um, and I think it sounds kind of like potato chip, potato chip. Um, so my sister, I told this to her, she doesn't remember the American goldfinch, but she remembers the potato chip bird. So that's their flight call. That's a call that they kind of make as they're flying um, is that potato chip. So you can listen for that. And then at the end, I'm not sure what that vocalization is at the end, but I'm sure it's another type of call that they make that duty, duty. Um, next, we have the red-bellied woodpecker. So there, it was hard for me to narrow down and pick one type of woodpecker because most of the species of woodpecker we have in Missouri, you can find in most backyards. Um, but this red-bellied woodpecker, I think has a really distinct noise that it makes. It's very loud. Um, it usually lets you know when it's in the area. Um, so this is what the red-bellied woodpecker sounds like. Red-bellied woodpecker. So this one's a little bit tricky in terms of song versus call. So the woodpecker song is actually that drumming noise that you hear. So they don't sing with their vocal cords like these other birds that I'm sharing with you do. They sing by banging their beak against hollow wood to make that drumming sound. Um, and they'll bang that against wood, against your gutters, against anything. So they're using that drumming noise to establish a territory and attract a mate. So often people um, come to me and they're like, I have this woodpecker, it's banging against my gutters. Why is it doing that? Doesn't it know that that's not wood? Yes, it does know. And what it knows is that that banging against your gutter is a lot louder than banging against wood. 
And so it's able to establish a greater territory because its drumming sound is much louder. And then you heard a couple different calls of the red-bellied woodpecker in that recording. So kind of one that sounds like chuck, 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 chuck. And then another trill sound. So that thrr, thrr kind of sound. So I'll let you listen to that again. Red-bellied woodpecker. So that last little part was the red-bellied woodpecker singing. All right, next is a cute but really loud bird. So this is the Carolina wren. Um, and they're very common in backyards. And I swear I can hear these little birds over a mile away. They have very loud voices. So this is what they sound like. I hear these almost every morning. So I'm sure you guys have heard, the, heard them around as well. So they also make a lot of different sounds, but I want you to focus on two of those recordings. So that first part is their song. And some people describe them as they're saying, tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle, tea kettle, or pidaro, 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 kind of like da 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 And then that last part of the recording, that loud, like repeated, like chattering, like eh, 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 eh. Um, that's what I'll hear if I get a little too close to their nest, and they have been known to nest near people's houses, um, so that might be a sound that you hear quite frequently too. So those are the two that I hear most often, but they can make a lot of different vocalizations, as you heard by the recording. So here's the Carolina wren one more time. So that last, um, the next bird I'm going to go through kind of quickly in the interest of time, but this is the Eastern Phoebe um, and a great way to identify them by sight because they can look like a lot of other birds is that they wag their tail when they perch. So if you look for that brown on the back, light on the front, and then if they're sitting on their perch like this, if you look at my camera, they'll kind of wag their tails like this as they perch. And that's the Eastern Phoebe. And this is what they sound like. You'll kind of hear them. Um, so I think I'm just gonna play this recording once in the interest of time. Um, so you'll kind of, they say their name. So they kind of go Phoebe, 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 Phoebe. And that's their song. Um, and then their call is just a like a very crisp, short chip note. So here's what the Eastern Phoebe sounds like. So that's one that I hear quite frequently as well. So like I said, they say their name and then they have a soft chip note. 
So lastly, I'm going to end with my favorite backyard bird, which is the white-breasted nuthatch. Um, this bird, um, along with its uh, close relative, the red-breasted nuthatch, are the only birds in Missouri that will climb down tree trunks like this head first. Um, and while they climb down he uh, tree trunks, they make a variety of noises that kind of sound like a nasal yank, 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 yank. Um, and that's kind of their call. Um, but also they'll kind of go like, whoa, 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 and that's their song. So listen for the whoa, 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 whoa song and the yank, yank, yank call in this recording. Ah, some of my favorite sounds to hear because that means a white breasted nut hatch is near. <laughs> um, so that wah, 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 wah song and that short nasal yank as their call. All right. Um, so I just want to thank you all for listening. I hope you learned a new bird sound that you didn't know before. Um, and hopefully this can enhance your experience outside. Being able to tune into the language of birds has greatly increased my experience being outside and makes me feel more connected to nature. So I hope it does the same for you. So thank you for listening. The last thing I wanna share with you all, um, if you're interested in learning more bird sounds um, and you're between the ages of eight and 17 years old, we have a club for you and it's called the Missouri Young Birders Club. And it's just a bunch of other kids that like learning about nature um, and experiencing it. And we just get together and go on field trips. And sometimes we meet via Zoom and we talk about birds. Um, and all kinds of cool stuff. So I'll put that link in the chat, but just in case you don't get to it, that's Missouri, so moyoungbirders.org. And I hope that you all enjoyed the presentation and thanks for listening. Great, thank you so much, Paige, that was wonderful. I truly was trying to look at the window when, <laughs> when I heard a couple bird sounds, I'm like, no, it's my screen. Um, we did have one question um, that came in and it was about woodpeckers. Do they hurt their beaks if they are accidentally, instead of on a tree, on like a gutter? Oh, that's a great question. Or something else, maybe? Yeah. Um, so the my short answer is no. So the woodpeckers know what they're doing. So they have a lot of different adaptations to help protect their beak, to help protect their brain, their skull, all kinds of that stuff. Um, I could do a whole other presentation on woodpeckers, and I would. <laughs> um, but have you back. <laughs> also know how to hit it at the precise angle um, so it doesn't hurt their beak um, and that they can um, get that sound out. So they're really unique birds that can do a lot of really cool stuff. But that's a great question. Um, and thanks for your concern about the woodpeckers. But <laughs> Yeah, that's great. That was the only question we had, but I do think we will try to have you back and hopefully as I was telling Paige, hopefully we could do it in person sometime, uh, but we're not sure when that will take place. Uh, for the library people out there that are in our service area, we still are offering curbside, but also our building is open. So feel free to come in and get your books as well. Um, this was recorded and in a couple days, it'll be up on our YouTube channel and it will be there till September 22nd. So you'll have plenty of time to revisit it and um, enjoy the presentation. So go outside and try to hear some birds right now. That's the beautiful part about this presentation. You can use it right now. So enjoy, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, right. Paige. Bye, everybody. Yes, Bye. no problem.